Hi friends. Today we are in Deuteronomy chapter 21 and there are two sets of laws that I want to talk to you about today that might either seem really weird <laughs> or probably a little bit off-putting to you. The first is that God wants to uh, the Israelites to provide a purification ritual when there is an unsolved murder. And the second, and this is the one that probably bothers you, is that God instructs that if, if an Israelite soldier is going to war and conquers another nation and sees a female captive from that nation that he desires, he has to marry her. If you feel queasy, I understand. Let me point out a few things that I think are happening here that show us God's heart in this situation. Why would he instruct such a thing? Let's talk about it. When Moses talks about the uh, purification for unsolved murders, he describes how spilled blood on the ground defiles the land and this feels like such foreign language to us but basically what he's getting at is this biblical theme that when humans take another's life or or do violence against another spill another's blood that is not okay with god in fact it really seems like um the biblical authors see that as humans playing god right he is really the only one who has the right and the authority to decide when we live and when we die. And so when, when somebody else spills another's blood, it is like humanity is playing God. They are violating God's created order and returning somebody else to the ground before their time. That is not okay with God. And this biblical theme starts all the way back in Genesis 4 the first time the blood is spilled in the Bible. It's the Cain and Abel story, if you're familiar. And when Cain, out of jealousy and anger, takes his brother's life, God says to him, what have you done? Your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. This is not okay, God says. And I, you're, the cry, <laughs> your brother cannot cry out at this injustice, but the, the idea here is like, because your brother cannot cry out, his bloodshed on the ground cries out to me and speaks to me of the injustice and the violation that has happened here. And that cannot continue, that is not allowed. That is not the way that God wants humanity to treat one another. It's not how he designed his world to be. Another time that we hear about the cry of those experiencing injustice rising up to God is in the Exodus. Right at the beginning of the Exodus story, we hear that the cry of the Israelites who were being oppressed and enslaved and abused, whose babies were being killed, whose blood was being shed, their cry was rising up to God from, from the ground on earth to his heavenly realms. They, the cries reach his ears and God says, that is not okay and I am going to move on behalf of those who are crying out to me, on behalf of the innocent and the oppressed and those experiencing injustice. And I think it is this God that Moses is reflecting in the laws that he gives in Deuteronomy. He says, just like God cares so much about the way we treat each other and about the sanctity of human life, you will also care so much. And so even if there is a murder that is unsolved, it's not okay to just leave the case open and move on with your life. We, we have an obligation to, to symbolically and ritually honor the fact that something, a violation has occurred here. 
and it is not okay. And even if we were not the perpetrators, we are grieved and we are sorry that it happened. Because that kind of thing should not happen in Israel. Now, when we turn to the case of female captives, it might be harder to see here. But I want to challenge us to think about the fact that we are dealing with an ancient society that was so, so different from our own, where warfare practices were cruel and women's rights were, oh my gosh, <laughs> limited, especially if you were a captive, a war prisoner. In most ancient societies, soldiers, as disgusting and despicable as it is, were permitted to do whatever they wanted with female captives. And so this is the God who hears the cry of those experiencing injustice, the cry of the innocent, the cry of those who cannot stand up for themselves, who aren't empowered to defend themselves. And he moves in their favor by restricting the rights of those who have power in the situation, right? That he restricts the rights of the, the male soldier and says, you cannot treat her however you want. If you desire her, you better be willing to take responsibility for her and provide for her and honor her as your wife. And he moves on behalf of the innocent to um, um, at least mitigate the worst effects of this cultural practice. He tries to create humane practices within the inhumane. And so, while these may be baby steps and not the big steps that we would like to see, can you see how the God who hears the blood and the cries of the innocent, his ears are perked to hear their cries. Can you see how he is baby stepping Israel towards being a society that reflects him? That he is teaching them to also have their ears perked up for the cries of those who experience injustice and teaching them to move on their behalf. It may not be as far as we would like, but God is walking his people towards a future day where they will honor one another's inherent worth and the sanctity of human life in the same way that he does. He places infinite value on humans no matter your age or your race or your gender or your socioeconomic situation or the circumstances that has happened to you or the wrongs that you have committed. He places infinite worth on humanity and he is trying to program that in to the Israelites' everyday life. So what about us? Thank goodness we live in a very different society that attributes more worth to one another. But you and I know that our society is not perfect, and so in Dallas, or wherever this video is finding you, whose cries are reaching God's heavenly ears? How can we have our ears perked like he does to hear those who are crying out because they are experiencing injustice, uh, because they feel like they are defenseless, that they are vulnerable? Whose cries should our ears be tuned to hear? And how can we, like God, move to respond to them and come to their aid and come to their defense and empower those who are vulnerable in our society. If our God is the one who hears the cries of the innocent and the vulnerable and the oppressed, how can we be like him and move towards them like he does? Something to chew on today. Take care, friends.